All right, so this will be the last video in the tutorial series, and we'll go ahead and just refresh what we're trying to make here. We're trying to finish up layer four. We've already finished making layers one, two, and three in order to get this final view. Okay, so now we're just trying to create this left chevron and this ellipses, and they should not scroll up when, when the rest of our scrollable content scrolls. So this is where we left off last time. We have an animated play button, Okay, one thing that's been bothering me is I just want to change the size of that font for play. Be a little bit nicer. If we took down the font to be roughly maybe 17. Just so that. Let me run it now. At its smallest size, the circle does not cut off the word play. So that is that. Perfect. All right. And now for the fourth layer, I've been thinking a lot about it, and I actually think that the fourth layer would be better suited if we placed it underneath layer three. And you'll understand why aesthetically when we get going. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what we need to do is we need to, well, actually, realistically, it's not the layer itself that needs to be placed behind the, the third layer. It's something else we'll need to add that you'll realize as we go. But right now, we'll just continue with our original plan of putting layer 4 after or on top of layer 3. So layer 4 needs to be another V stack. Okay. And inside that V stack, we're going to need to put these two buttons. So you can imagine that this section right here alone is an H stack with an image and an image separated by a spacer. Let's call it, let's say right inside the V stack, we have an H stack. The H stack will have a spacer. In addition to a spacer, we'll have an image with system name. We'll go to SF symbols. We'll search for back. We'll find that back. Um, it's not going to give us what we want. We just want Chevron. That's what we're looking for. This is Chevron to the left. So Chevron dot left. And that's a string. So now we have a left Chevron. Now we need to put the ellipses on the right. Okay, we want to change the color of these. These work like text, so the color is going to be foreground color. We want a white foreground color. Here they are, dead center of the screen, not where we want them. But they are certainly there and they're certainly fixed. So what we need to do is we need to push them to the top using spacer. We put spacer. Notice the spacer is outside the H stack but inside the V stack. Now they're in their spot. They're a little ugly. They're all the way to the edges. So let's give this H stack some padding. So padding. Now when it updates you'll see that everything now is looking nice. Now the one thing that's bothering me is the fact that when I start scrolling down here this ellipses is hard to distinguish from this ellipses so it gets kind of confusing whether we're looking at the ellipses for the overall page or this this one item. So what we'll go ahead and do um, <clears throat> is we will create almost if we look at the actual Spotify app, you'll find that there's there's almost like a blue, once you get into this black area, we end up with some sort of like blue coloring that is below our fixed ellipses and chevron, but above or on top of the individual scrollable content items. So what we'll do realistically is we need to create a new item here that has our the main rule it has to be above layer two and it has to be below layer three. So it has to be above layer two so it can distinguish it from the scrollable content and below layer three so it doesn't affect the play button. So what we'll do is we'll create another V stack. Okay. And inside that V stack, what I want to do is I want to put a linear gradient. And that linear gradient is actually, I like doing it like this because it auto completes everything. Linear gradient, toss it in there. Sure enough, we got this humongous linear gradient covering everything, but that's okay. We want to first say the edges ignore the safe area for all the safe areas. They'll fill up the top and the bottom. The next thing we want to do is we want to say it's going to be from top to bottom. And the last thing we need to do is we need to say that it's going to go color.clear. And it's going to start at, why don't we pick the same nice blue color that we had originally used. So instead of creating that color over and over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that color. 
remember that was part of layer zero, that nice color. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna create a new variable to store that for uh, for for now. So I'm gonna say var reusable color is equal to so now I can just write reusable color everywhere. Reusable color, and I can use it here. Reusable color. Now when it updates, we'll see what we get. We get exactly what we were hoping for, and it's a little too big though. You know, if you think about it, it's it's the entire it's spanning the entire screen. So even though it looks like it's only covering from roughly here to here, you have to remember that. At 50% of the way through, it starts transitioning to clear. So there's a clear portion of the gradient here. So just to make things nice and easy, I'm just going to say the frame has a height of 300. And the minute I do that, you'll notice that it starts hanging out down here because it's trying to fit halfway through the page. So that's it. It's really the gradient now is hanging out here. So I need to do one last thing. In that V stack, I need to put a spacer. And that spacer kicked it all the way to the top. So now, when I start scrolling upwards, you'll notice that there's this nice blue tint behind the chevron and ellipses to help us understand that this ellipses and this chevron are part of a different level. It's part of the overall screen, not part of these individual items. And really, the main confusion we're trying to avoid is this ellipses being confused with this ellipses. All right? So that pretty much wraps us up. You know, you can fiddle around and change these numbers to 330, for instance. Suddenly it starts getting clearer and clearer what you're working on, what you're trying to do here. And we want to get rid of this yellow text that we had, that observer layer, and we can just comment it out, to be honest, in case we want to use it later. So we save it. Try again. We need to comment out both lines. Now when it updates, we have our finished product. There's no yellow text up here. We have all four layers. And we have almost like a background, just keeping that everything nice and commented. Background layer for layer four, slash layer three. And that's exactly what we were looking for, all right? Thanks for staying with us here. And um, yeah, we'll be releasing some more tutorials soon. So stay tuned and thanks for getting to the end of this if you guys have any interest in getting into the nitty-gritty of the actual spotify api um i'd be happy to do so with enough interest just uh, comment below and don't forget to subscribe thanks